Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Dr. Akiko Chiba. I'm a breast surgical oncologist at Wake Forest Baptist Health. Today, I would like to talk about genetic testing and particularly focusing on two genetic mutations called BRCA1 and BRCA2. Those are the most common genetic mutations we have that leads to someone having breast cancer. Um, so genetic mutation um, that causes breast cancer is only seen in about 5 to 10% of the breast cancers. However, I do think it's very important for someone who has been diagnosed with breast cancer to find out if they are at increased risk of carrying ge these genetic mutations. Um, these genetic mutations are um, something that can be passed on from either your father or mother. And if you have the genetic mutation, you have 50% chance of passing this mutated gene to your children, which include your sons and your daughters. Um, so what does it mean if you have a genetic mutation? So people who carry this gene are at increased risk of getting breast and ovarian cancer. So if you have this genetic mutation, up to 80% of the patient will have breast cancer in their lifetime, which is significantly higher than the average population, which is about 12%. Um, so ovarian cancer risk is up to about 40% in someone with BRCA1 mutation and about 20% in someone with BRCA2 mutation. And BRCA1 and 2 mutations are similar in that they both increase the chance of getting breast and ovarian cancer, but it could also um, increase the chance of other, other cancers as well. Um, so if, if you are diagnosed with breast cancer, who are the people who should be tested for this mutation? So if your cancer is diagnosed early, which we consider before age of 50, is early diagnosis and we do recommend genetic testing. And also if you have multiple close family member that had had either breast or ovarian cancer. Cro close relatives are um, especially your mother or your sister or your daughter. Those are called first degree relatives and the in a chance of having a genetic mutation is higher if you have a closer relatives with breast cancer diagnosis. And if one of them is at least diagnosed at earlier than age 50, then that also increases the chance that you might be having a genetic mutation. And the other type, special type of breast cancer called triple negative breast cancer is often associated with BRCA1 mutation. Triple negative breast cancer means that the breast cancer does not have estrogen receptor or progesterone receptor or HER2 new receptor. So these tumors are called triple negative because all three of the receptors are negative. If you are diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer before the age of 60, we would also recommend genetic testing. If you have two breast cancers in a same person, we would also recommend genetic testing. And if you're a male with breast cancer, or if you have a family member that's a male who had breast cancer, that is another indication for testing. And another um, recommendation is someone with Ashkenazi Jewish descent who has breast cancer, they would be recommended to have the testing. So if you do not have cancer diagnosis, but if you are curious about getting genetic testing, those are also available, and people who um, would be recommended to do that would be someone whose close relative has been diagnosed with genetic mutation. And let's say, for example, if your mother has the genetic mutation, then you would have 50% chance that you would be carrying this gene. So you would be recommended to undergo testing to find out if you actually do carry this gene or not because depending on the result, the screening recommendation is different and also um, surgery may be recommended depending on the risk. Let's see, so how is this gene
machine tested. So there's two way of testing and one way is just a blood test and the other way if you don't like blood draws we can um, use your saliva to test for the mutation. And the test takes about two to three weeks to get the result. It used to take six weeks but now we have improved technology and with um, expedited testing we can get your result in about two to three weeks. So what should you do if you do have BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation? And if you also do have cancer diagnosis, surgical treatment for breast cancer is either lumpectomy or mastectomy. In lumpectomy, only portion of the breast is removed, where in mastectomy, the entire breast is removed. So with someone with the genetic mutation, they might consider having mastectomy instead of lumpectomy since having an additional cancer at later date is significantly increased. And also, the side without the breast cancer um, is a normal breast, but some people may decide to remove the other healthy breast to prevent cancer from um, coming back in the other breast as well. And if you have the genetic mutation, the chance of getting breast cancer in the other breast is about 30%, where if you didn't have the mutation, the risk of getting another cancer on the opposite breast is about 5%. So there is a significant increase in the risk if you do carry this mutation. And it is not necessary to undergo mastectomy, but if you choose to undergo lumpectomy, additional screening with mammogram and MRI would be recommended for these patients. And the other thing that we would recommend is um, screening for their ovarian cancer. Since the risk of ovarian cancer is 20 to 40 percent, um, and there is no good screening method for ovarian cancer. We do still recommend uh, vaginal ultrasound and also blood tests called um, CA125, but neither of the tests are very sensitive and it doesn't um, lead to improved outcome of the patients. So if you are um, carrying this mutation, we would recommend you to have prophylactic salpingo ovorectomy, which means we would recommend your ovaries and your fallopian tube to be removed so that you do not develop cancer. And we would generally recommend that at about age 35 to 40 or when they're done with their childbearing. And other good thing about removing the ovaries with the BRCA mutation is that removing the ovaries does decrease the chance of developing breast cancer by 50%. So if you decide to keep your breast um, after breast cancer treatment, and if you remove your ovaries, that's additional 50% reduction of your future breast cancer risk. Let's see. So if you do not have cancer and you are diagnosed with this genetic mutation, what should you do? So there are three things we could do. You could do um, close screening, which involves annual mammogram and MRI and breast exam every six months. And that would be recommended to start about age 30. Or if you have family member that was diagnosed with breast cancer at very early age, we would recommend um, 10 years earlier than the relative with the youngest age who's been diagnosed. And the other option would be um, chemo prevention, which means that you take a medication called tamoxifen to reduce the risk of breast cancer in the future. But since I mentioned earlier that BRCA1 mutation patients have triple negative breast cancer, which is not dependent on estrogen or progesterone to grow, so tamoxifen is a medication that blocks the estrogen so in BRCA1 mutation patients, the benefit of the chemo prevention might not be um, that beneficial, but there's not, not a lot of study about this, but we do think there may be some benefit to taking chemo prevention. The other 
um, modality to prevent your future breast cancer is called prophylactic mastectomy, which means that you would remove your healthy breast to prevent cancer from um, occurring in the future. So in this case, um, oftentimes we can offer what's called skin sparing mastectomy where we would save all the skin overlying the breast and plastic surgeon will do the reconstruction at the same time, which is called um, immediate reconstruction. And we can also offer another operation called nipple sparing mastectomy where the nipple is spared so the cosmetic outcome is superior to other types of mastectomy. So after this operation, the entire breast tissue will be removed um, with an incision, sometimes underneath the breast fold. So the cosmetic outcome would be similar to what you would have with breast augmentation. An implant would be placed um, after the breast is removed and this can also be performed at the same time as the breast removal. Right, I think we're getting some questions. Let's see. If I've already had breast cancer, is it worth getting tested? Um, the answer is yes. If you already had cancer and you were never offered this test or maybe you were diagnosed um, before the genetic testing was available, I would still recommend you to go back to your physician and have genetic testing. The reason for that is because it may not change what we do for you, but it may make a big difference in your family member. If you have a daughter or son, you have, and if you have the mutation, you have 50% chance that you could have um, passed on this gene mutation, so you would want to find out about that. And in addition to BRCA1 and 2 testing, we now have discovered a handful of other genes that may be related to breast cancer. So if you already had testing um, 10 years ago, and if you were negative for BRCA1 or 2 mutation, I would also recommend these group of patients to go back and ask for panel testing, which may be also helpful. Okay, I have another question. What age do you recommend to get your first mammogram? So the screening mammogram is recommended at starting age 40, and it's a once a year screening. But this is for someone with average risk, which means that you don't have strong family member or you don't have family member with ovarian cancer. And there are a few other cancers that may be related to breast cancer, such as pancreatic cancer. So if you have family member with these other types of cancers, you might want to speak to your physician or visit um, high risk breast clinic to find out what your risk would be. And if you are considered high risk, which means your lifetime risk of breast cancer is more than 20%, these patients are recommended to have um, screening um, with mammogram and MRI, and the age might be also different depending on the first age of your, uh, earliest age of your family, close family member being diagnosed with breast cancer. So for example, if your mother was diagnosed with breast cancer at age 40, then I would recommend their close relatives to start screening at age 30. Okay, next question. Is the saliva test as accurate as the blood test? Hmm, great question. It is just as accurate, but sometimes we don't have enough DNA in the saliva depending on um, how much saliva you produced. So there's a time that we don't have enough DNA in the sample to run the test, but if we have enough DNA, the test is just as accurate, but you do have chance of not having enough DNA and not being able to have the result back. All right, next question. What are the different stages of breast cancer? So breast cancer is divided into stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. So in stage one breast cancer, um, the breast cancer is confined to just the breast. And then in stage two and three, 
um, the tumor might be very large in the breast or um, you'll have uh, metastasis to your lymph node. That's the closest lymph node to your um, breast and that's the first place the breast cancer would go is a lymph node underneath the armpit. So if you have um, lymph node involvement, that would be considered either stage two or stage three. And once you get to stage four, um, that means you have breast cancer that's outside of the breast or the lymph node, and which means that the cancer cell has already spread to places like your brain, your bones, liver, and your lungs. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. If you have further questions, please visit wakehealth.edu. Thank you so much.